to give you a little description of what I did here on this keel because I put a couple of videos out and didn't tell anybody. I didn't give any description or any captions and people were asking, well, what, what the hell are you doing? So this is the, the pattern I made 18 years ago. First thing I built when I started building the boat was this pattern that's in the back of my truck now. And it's going to Alvarado, Texas to be to go into the ground. And I'm going to pour concrete around it twice. Pour concrete around it uh, to, to uh, make it the, the, the pattern, the mold for my uh, lead ballast keel. So uh, here it is in, in an Alvarado getting ready to go down in the hole to, uh, we've already got concrete poured once. We put it down the hole there and then I put a, uh, a fireproof concrete around it because it's gonna have such heat around it. There it is in the hole now and uh, we're gonna mix the concrete pour in there. Then I'm gonna melt this lead. This is uh, 13,000 pounds of lead in 35 pound ingots. Had that box built with a three quarter inch steel plate to uh, be able to hold that weight while it's burning. Here it is after we, right after I lit the fire. And uh, it's gonna be poured into that, uh, where, that, where that plywood box is. That, that plywood box is holding the stainless steel rods in place so I can pour the concrete around it. I didn't know when we started this, when I, when I lit the fire, is it gonna take an hour, hour and a half? A day, two days, I had no idea how long it would take to melt. It took about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. You see the wire right there. I've got that wire run several feet across the yard there, so I don't have to be close to it. I'll pull it over and dump it into the hole. Here it goes here. Okay, it's going. Now that lead is running out of that container into that hole. It's uh, 623 feet. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can blow it up. It runs out like hot water. And it boils for an hour. It holds about uh, uh, almost three and a half feet. So that lead stayed hot for a long time. Two weeks later, I hired this guy with this uh, hoe ram on a, on a uh, bobcat to come out and start chipping that thing out of there, breaking that concrete off, off of it. And uh, he was a talent, I tell you. He just uh, hopped around that thing like a, like a spider. He just chipped it off. Took him probably three hours to get that concrete off of there. It was fun to watch him. You can tell he rides that thing all day long, every night. You see the lead sticking up here on the side. Uh, kind of leaves a, a trench in the middle of it. That's uh, excess and splashed up on the side. And I'll have to cut that off. I had a crane come out. I put a, a piece of steel plate on it and bolted it to those uh, off fed rods and I had a crane come pick it up and move it to my Trailer. There it is after trade. It's ready to be picked up now. It was a quite quite a bit bigger hole than I expected to do to uh, my friend uh, that let me use his shop yard. I had to dug pretty hard. There's a steel plate. I'm just gonna pick it up. Move it. It's uh, 13,000 pounds of lead. But you'll see that crane is quite a bit of overkill, but that's what, they had, that's what they had that was available for the day, so that's what I got. I think we did this on a Saturday, Saturday morning. And so we put it on my trailer and take it back to my shop. The trailer was, uh, not if my love when I was driving it back to the shop, the trailer brakes were not adequate for that much weight. I just had a hard time getting back to my shop with it. And there's no need to take a stand. It was I who chose to start. As they know.
Okay, leaving the yard in Alvarado and then back to my shop. There it is in front of my shop. Uh, so I uh, leveled that trailer up and fit up on jacks, got it up off the wheels and uh, made it into a level working surface so platform out there uh, to uh, work on it. You cut the uh, lead with a uh, skill saw or a chainsaw even. It's uh, interesting. You don't want to get it stuck in the, in the lead though. You can't let the blade stop while it's turning. Cut this excess off. This is the excess that's flashed up on the side, and I want to take that off and uh, melt that and pour it back on top to finish. There's the excess, or some of it had a lot more than that. Uh, I want to melt that and put it back on top of the keel. Don't want to waste it. I need the weight. It's going to have 13,000 pounds. There's the propane in the, in the cast iron pots I use to melt the lead. You see it poured it, you pour it, you see it poured in there. And then I'll start adding the wood to it uh, because I've got to add nine inches on top of that uh, lead. I put nine inches of wood on top, that's white oak. And you see the back, uh, the balance of the keel, the wood keel is not ballast, that's just wood, but, the, but it, matches the, uh, it, it matches the keel on the boat. So I have, I have to make it longer. Uh, it's still, that's part of that pattern I made 18 years ago. Um, now it's going on the back of the ballast keel, bolted on there, glued on there with epoxy and fiberglass. Uh, right now you see it, uh, I filled the divots. You got it pretty smooth in the process of making it really smooth. There it is to full size and putting filler on it. And then the fiberglass cloth and epoxy. I put uh, three layers of epoxy, three layers of fiberglass on, and a lot of epoxy because it's going to be underwater. I mean, that's, that's hanging on the bottom of the boat. Those all thread rods are one inch stainless steel, and they line up with the holes in the bottom of the boat with the floor timbers. Now, there's my shop. <laughs> While well, I was doing that, it got to be quite a mess working out there at night. Those rods get cut to length to uh, match the floor timber. This is uh, after epoxy and I'm putting a uh, marine filler on it, a water, uh, 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 epoxy based filler. And then you see my first coat of uh, primer going on right there. So it's all primered now. Paint it. paint it. I'll paint it bright red because I'll, after that, when I get to the coast and I put it on the boat, I'll paint it black to match the rest of the boat. But that black paint is a copper based paint and it leaches off over time so that when barnacles and things attach to the boat, they come off because the paint leaches off. And then so you've got a black paint with a red, red underneath it. When you see the red under your boat, you know your uh, black paint is uh, due to be replaced and it's time to. Time to redo your, uh, pull your boat out of the water, clean it, and uh, and uh, repaint the keel, repaint the bottom sides. And uh, there's the boat. So it's about ready to go to the coast. Getting close. Thanks, guys.